Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the using keyword in C++. Now, the using keyword has been overloaded in what it can do or its abilities in modern C++. So I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about how we can use it as an alias, as well as the classical use case with namespaces for the using keyword. So with that said, let's go ahead and just start with looking at some examples of how using is used. So if you go ahead and Google in any browser, C++ Hello World, you'll find a plethora of tutorials showing out how to write Hello World. In fact, this is the way that I learned here. You can click on some of these examples here, and you'll see a variety of them. And what you'll notice is some of them are different where you have a using namespace standard at the top here. So just looking through a good number of these, about half of them use using namespace standard, and about half seem to not use them. And depending on when you learn C++ or when that tutorial was written, this might vary. It's also a little bit of a stylistic choice, but I, in general, prefer not to use it in the way that you first learn it, like in this example here. So let me go ahead and let's go ahead and look at what a namespace is. Again, we've covered this before in this series, but um, just as a reminder, if you're joining us, namespace is basically a way to group blocks of code so that they have a unique name. So that is to say, if I make a module of some code and you make a module and we have functions that are named the same thing, you can find things in Mike colon colon namespace versus whatever your namespace is. So again, it's a way to logically structure our code. But let's go ahead and do a few examples here. So the first use case that I want to go ahead and talk about here, which I'll just annotate in the top right corner here, is using namespace. And most commonly, you'll see this with standard in this case here. So here's my code here. And I'm going to go ahead and just compile it and run it so you can see the text that prints out here. But again, a lot of folks will say, well, typing out standard colon colon is annoying. I don't want to do that. So what they'll say is using namespace standard here. And this code will still uh, work and compile as is. But what I can go ahead and do is just delete standard here and then just type C out. And basically what this is instructing the compiler to do is to look for this C out function. If it doesn't find it, then to look in, well, is within the scope of the standard library or that standard namespace, std colon colon function C out, then it will call this appropriate function. So that is the basic idea. Now, what's kind of neat about this is we can actually scope this using namespace here. So this is a little bit of a better usage of using namespace here. So let's go ahead and compile this just to go ahead and show you that it works here. And again, just to show you that this can work within this block scope here using namespace uh, standard here. Let's go ahead and just write another function here. I'll just call it foo for now. And if I try to do a C out, will this work? And let's go ahead and uh, actually call this function. Let's go ahead and see if it even compiles. Well, it doesn't, because it doesn't know about uh, this namespace here to find the C out, uh, in this case, this object within the scope of the standard namespace. So I could either expose this globally here, and then any function anywhere in this particular file here will look for the things in the standard namespace. And now it works if I go ahead and compile. Uh, or I can just locally scope this. And this is my preference here if I'm doing a good job writing code in a you know code base that a lot of folks are using to actually scope this here and try to do things appropriately. And in fact, you can even do a little bit better and even just do using standard and then C out, for instance. Uh, and let's go ahead and do this in both of these. So again, depending on you know your code base, you can just have things sort of structured in this nice way. So again, this will work here. So let's go ahead and run it. And just for, again, demonstration purposes, if I get rid of this here, then we'll go ahead and see, well, this one's not going to compile unless I bring forward where can I find this C out stream here. And in particular, this is an object here. Uh, I need to look in this namespace. OK, so we're just being clear. And for this particular code block, allowing us to take this shortcut if we're going to do a lot of C out statements. So again, this is sort of the preference here for using the using keyword. Now, let's go ahead and look at CPP reference here at some other examples of the using keyword here. Now, you'll notice when you look at some of the standard library, for instance, things like vector, you'll see the using keyword show up here. 
Now, I don't see the word namespace to be found anywhere, but what I do see is that we're somehow using vector here inside of this uh, namespace here to mean some other sort of type here. So in short, what I'm trying to say is the second use case, which I'm going to talk about in this video, is as a type alias. Okay, and this can remind us of something like type def, but we get a little bit more power with the using keyword. So I would in general say you should prefer using if you're just writing code that's going to be used in C++ and not any other code bases uh, for your type aliases. So let me go ahead and demonstrate what exactly that means here if I uh, go ahead and amend our uh, example here. So let's go ahead and just start with something um, simple here by saying using, again, the keyword here, and you might say something like void t, and let's just go ahead and set it to void here. And now all of my voids here, well, the one that I have here, I can recompile and rerun this. And again, it's going to do the textual substitution. Now, again, what I'm showing that this is equivalent to is if I said type def uh, void, and then uh, something like that, void tt here. Um, which again, I'll just show you that this uh, works fine. Uh, that's the same idea here. Okay, so this is equivalent here. So let me just go ahead and leave this as a comment. Is the same as below with the using keyword. Okay, so why the need of this new way to use uh, using here? Well, certainly we could sort of try some experiments here, but what I want to go ahead and show you where the using keyword really shines is when we do have templates. So let's go ahead and uh, create some sort of templated uh, data type here. So template uh, class T here, and let's just go ahead and give ourselves a new uh, data structure. So I'm just going to call it data structure. And if you haven't uh, already seen my lessons on templates, make sure that you check those out. Uh, but we have some data structure here, some data structure. Okay, and I'll go ahead and just make this a struct for fun here, just so everything's public in case we want to play around with it or you want to play around with it later. Now, okay, so how can we use the using keyword here to help us out here? Well, one common thing that again, we might want to do is do something like type def, and then we want to go ahead and do a type definition for this particular uh, data structure. And I want to make it uh, of integers, a particular version of this. So I'll call it data structure uh, int, for instance. And let's just go ahead and uh, compile that just to show you that this compiles. So this is all well and good how we can use this uh, data structure here. And now let's go ahead and again show you the equivalent with using here. And again, things are a little bit flipped around here. Data structure uh, int, and uh, that's going to be the name. And then it's going to be the actual uh, template type here. So I'm going to have to uh, comment that out here just again to show you that this is working. This is the equivalent thing here. Okay, so again, no benefit, but I just told you that this is going to be useful for when we are working with templates. But with the using keyword, we can actually preserve that T if we wanted here. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more into our structure here. And let's just go ahead and create another uh, class here. Um, or let's actually just, you know what, let's just do size T here uh, for the actual size of our structure here. And uh, I'll provide, uh, I don't know, however big this type needs to be, let's say 10. Uh, and again, just to compile to show you that it's uh, working. So let's just give this a little bit of a better name, data structure uh, int 10 here. But uh, what happens if I want to do this with uh, my type tip? Well, again, let me just show you that this works here. So int 10 here. So you sort of have this shortcut or specialization or maybe this safer way to make sure that anybody who's creating this type has, you know, a way to do this with, um, you know, 10 uh, integers. Uh, so that's all well and good. Um, and actually, let me copy this to show you the power of what we get with the using keywords here. And what if I want to actually preserve this template type here? So if I want to just leave this as T here. So I just want to call this data structure 10. So it's 10 integers, 10 floats, 10 of whatever the type is. But I just want to make sure that there's always 10 of them for whatever reason. Well, with the using keyword, I can do this. So I can, in fact, just like our regular templates, do template uh, class uh, T for the type here, and then just have sort of that specialization of 10 here. So now I can go ahead and um, compile this. 
oops, got a little bit ahead of myself. I still want to name this uh, size T here. Okay. Uh, and now, just like that, I am able to do this with a template here. Now, let's go ahead and try our example here uh, with uh, a type def to see if we can do the same thing here. Uh, so I'd have to do template class T size of T. Um, hmm. And then how would I do this with uh, type def? Well, I could sort of do, uh, well, I mean, the answer is we can't really do this cleanly. And that's the caveat that I'll give. There are ways to sort of hack around and to figure out, you know, uh, to create some sort of uh, type def of a template, but you end up doing weird sort of tricks here. So I actually don't have a great uh, equivalent other than maybe a, a template and sort of wrapping things in a struct um, and sort of hacking things that way. Um, so this is what we get in C++. I'll leave it just as a one-liner just so you can see that this is truly treating this as, again, you know, one sort of line here where we're able to use this data structure 10 here um, in this way here. So uh, let's actually make use of it. I think that's the last uh, thing to do in this code here. Uh, so let me undo that just so it's a little bit uh, cleaner here. And let's just go ahead and uh, figure out, well, how would I, now that I have this new uh, data structure 10 here, data structure, uh, and then I got to figure out the uh, actual uh, type that I want to use. And I realize this as I'm typing it, I'm going to go ahead and make a mistake here. Uh, it is saying wrong number of templates here because uh, I, I really only have one uh, template uh, in field here, right? I've already picked out 10 is going to be the actual size for this structure here, okay? Uh, so regardless, uh, this should now compile here now that I've got things fixed up. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, just to go ahead and show you that I can easily just say, hey, this is a float of, uh, you know, whatever my second type is or whatever, uh, that I'm able to make use of this uh, particular uh, data structure that I've created with the using this sort of um, alias uh, declaration here. Okay, so that's sort of the advantage. It cleans things up quite a bit here. So again, just to summarize here, uh, we have the type alias, and then it's uh, better because it's easier. It's easier to use with templates. Okay. And again, there are ways to do it. And maybe someone can show in the comments how to do this with the type def keyword and some other different hacks. But again, this is relatively clean. And you're going to see this with various things. If you look, especially through the uh, standard template library code um, or other uh, production code bases, the using keyword used all over the place and oftentimes replacing type def. So with that said, folks, I hope that helps clear up a little bit of the different use cases with the using keyword. I know it's something that's overloaded and that you see in different cases. So with namespaces, again, I prefer to scope things locally. So I almost never do using namespace uh, standard unless it's for quick and dirty uh, teaching examples or maybe slides, but even that I try to avoid. And then the second use case for the alias declarations can be really, really handy when you're working with templated data structures. Again, just to go ahead and show you really quick, in the use case with the vector, for instance, you can go ahead and see that, again, most of the time when you're creating a standard vector, as you've seen on this series, we're just concerned with the uh, actual type. And then, um, you know, we can create some sort of other declaration for uh, the type of allocator that's going to be used or, or, you know, change that if, if we really need to. Um, so anyways, I hope that was useful. I hope you're enjoying this series. As always, make sure to comment below if you have questions, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, so you can keep following along. We've got lots of content that's going to keep rolling out in this series. And with that said, thanks for your time and attention, folks. We'll see you soon.